Renaissance paintings, you see pictures of circular like objects up in the sky. And so like one of the things I realized too, like as a Christian is that, you know, when you look at these things, whether it's somebody who's had some sort of encounter, whether it's like a blurry creature, or in this case, you know, looking at the conversations surrounding a UFO sighting, whether it's Dr. Stephen Greer or Commander David Fraser, who was flying you know, an F-16 and saw uh, these, this Tic Tac encounter. Well, all these things are happening in God's world. So like Walter Martin would say in his book, The Kingdom of the Occult, like all things are created by you. Whatever is, whatever is going on, this is ex existing in God's world where all things were created by Christ and for Christ. So we need to be able to figure out, we, we can't just stick our heads in the sand. Like we have to be able to wrestle through and figure out what these things are. The history of our Earth is so different from what we can imagine. Enjoy the journey. The Smithsonian, that if they found out about a large skeleton somewhere, was to go get it. I'm going to assume at least one person is right, because if one person's right, it busts the paradigm. It all goes back to the fallen chair. And the problem with the modern day church, they have a very truncated view of the supernatural. This backdrop is just pregnant with all kinds of meaning associated with this Mount Hermon event. And this guy defects from the kingdom. That's a big deal. All right, welcome back to, to the blurry verse, Luke. We're doing a we're doing a mashup today. We're doing a crossover podcast with the Cultures Podcast, and we I first heard about you guys from Dr. Michael Heiser. Uh, he was talking about you guys on our episode we did with him. Uh, I think it was in the in the thirties. We're in the it was thirty four, Nate. Yeah. yeah, we're in like one seventy five, one seventy six now. So we're. It's been a while. We've we've been talking forever about doing this mashup. I think of like a year. Yeah. So the way we kick off our podcast always is. What are your thoughts on Bigfoot? Well, you guys have done episodes on Bigfoot, so yeah. maybe you don't want to go there. Well, I, I'll go there. Uh, I don't ought to ask Andrew if he has any formulated opinion on it. I, it's interesting for me. My first exposure to Bigfoot was the infamous Harry and the Hendersons. You know, so you think about the classic show, I'm an 80s kid. And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And you kind of, I kind of knew about it in passing. I think there is something to it. It kind of reminds me of where... The UFO conversation was like 25, 30 years ago when most of the time people knew there was something in the sky, but to go any further than that, I mean, you, that was kind of reserved for X-Files or whatever subreddits were back then. I don't even know what, like, <laughs> what was a, what was a Reddit thread like back 30 years ago? It was like a chat room yeah. on, on America it was, Online. It was, right. an, it, was an, it was an Angel Fire website. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like, there's, it's interesting because, I mean... <laughs> There's a similarity where there's a lot of people who tangibly have independent, you know, witness that they've had some interaction with something that typically is, you know, in a forest and kind of like the Northern Hemisphere, uh, for example, a lot of times. But uh, very, you know, different where like UFOs will show up around like desert air, desert terrains or bodies of water, which we'll definitely talk about when it comes to UFO disclosures. But yeah, I think there's also something to it in the sense to where there is sort of like a spiritual component where, you know, a lot of times, you know, as we'll talk about, usually the close encounters of the first, second, and third kind, even fourth kind, eventually lead to close encounters of the fifth kind, which is, you know, by way through occultic practices. So, yeah, yeah I, I think it's, I don't have a fully formulated opinion. I think it's tangible. I don't think you could just explain it away. Like, this is just something that people are all just sort of making up in their heads. I think there's something really tangible to it. I mean, when I was talking with uh, Dr. Ray Bechet, and uh, my friend Sarah, you know, both of them are avid believers in Bigfoot, and they have a very, you know, level-headed approach to it. So, yeah, I, did, I think there's some tangibility, and I think I have a lot to, you know, further explore on the topic, but it's definitely fascinating. Yeah, for, we've, we've interviewed probably 40, 50 doctors at this point on the show, and only a few have, mm -hmm. have, no, thought, uh, have no thoughts on Bigfoot. Yeah, most, famously, most... famously, Tim Mackey of the Bible Project, that was one of my favorite answers. He's like, well... And I, we love Tim, but he was like, I haven't really thought about it. I'm like, dude, you live in Portland. 
Like, yeah. You're like in the, yeah. the apex of the vortex, man. Like, and you mm-hmm. haven't thought about, you know, all at least gone to the store and seen all the memorabilia and been like, man, maybe I should think about there's something run, running well, that's around. That's what he but said. He's, yeah. He said that maybe I should have thoughts on it. Maybe I should have thoughts on it. But <laughs> yeah, usually some people have thought. I, I, I love what you said, Jeremiah. I, and that's kind of where we've come on in, in our journey is that there are two very, very opinionated camps in the in the Bigfoot world. And you are either in one where this is like 100% you know, an undocumented primate or un, unclassified, unphylomized, whatever you want to, you know, it, it's it's a primate out there and it's 100% an animal and it's just very, very elusive. And then you have this other camp that have, it's called the Woo, right? And they don't yeah. like each other at all. Mm. And that's stuff you learn it, it, yeah. as, as you go along in this. And, and Nate, you know, they spent 10,000 hours remodeling houses, listening to Bigfoot podcasts. And, <laughs> You know, that's sort of the, the genesis for for our podcast is just like there started being the as Nate was said there's there being theologians that came on these shows and you're like that's a weird thing to have and it, you know for a, a hairy creature in the woods but there's this other camp that says there's there's something very supernatural or or wooish is is the term about this thing because there are enough stories anecdotally that this thing you know, I don't know, associated with UFOs, you know, mm. like vanishing in front of people's eyes, like not just yeah. like you look away and it's gone, like it's just gone in front of your eyes or trying to side it up in a gun and then it disappears, sort of dematerializes. And, you, you know, those are anecdotal stories. But, you know, if one of the, is, is Dr. Michael Heiser, who was, you know, on our show a couple of times said, like, if just one of those is true, then it changes the entire paradigm. It causes yeah. you to have to have to consider what's really happening. And there's something yeah. weird and there's something very weird about and, and also it's the it's the it's the most popular one, right? It's the um sports analogies and be like it's like the New England Patriots of of cryptids, but all the pages aren't any good anymore. So it's like the Chiefs of of cryptids right now, right? Where it's the most popular one and all the all the kids are buying the jersey. So Yeah. Well hmm. with your guys' interest in Bigfoot, for example, did that start like pr- before the podcast or just come about by way oh, of yeah. people initially you started to see a consistent people giving opinions on it, so you, you gave it more of a focus, or what was the cause yeah. for you guys to have an interest in it, or even this pod, the podcast you guys do? Well, our episode one, we, we call it Bigfoot's the Gateway Drug, mm. and it really is because it's it's the most popular, like Luke said. it's People see it more than anything else, and you can dabble in Bigfoot. You can you can still be kind of credible. Like I said, like all these doctors have thoughts on Bigfoot. They don't. It's not like so niche or so out of the box that people are afraid to talk about it. Yeah. Like the UFO thing used to be that way, but in the last few years, now it's not. Everyone's talking about it. But I think for me, it was 2011, 2012. I went from playing music full time, being in a band with, you know, with people all day long to being by myself and remodeling some houses, trying to figure out what's next in life. And I just, Bigfoot was the right amount of weird and the right amount of interesting. So I just mm-hmm. got sucked into it. And it was always the hunters and the cops and the military that were telling their stories about, I just thought, man, I don't think these guys are lying. Yeah. What what the heck is this thing? And I just got sucked into more and more of it. And then I got into the missing 411 stuff with David Politis about national parks and state parks, people going missing. I started listening to him on Coast to Coast. And then around five, six years later, after I watched all the documentaries and I was really down that rabbit hole, then I started hearing theologians coming on podcasts talking about the Nephilim. And I grew up in the church. I grew up in Campus Crusade, Young Life. I worked at a camp. No one ever talked about this. And it it, it just really was like, wow, I'm, how come nobody's talked about this before? Mm-hmm. So then I was like, I think there's a connection here. There's this there's this weird paranormal stuff that the church isn't talking about. And there's this theological thread that ties in my whole upbringing and my faith and came up with the name Blurry Creatures, had it had the logo and the, the website ready to go for a while. And then Luke was tweeting about Bigfoot one day and we had we done a podcast on an <laughs> episode together on another podcast and we had a bunch of mutual friends. And I was like, and I know Luke used to have a podcast with his brother and I was like, hey, man. I got this thing ready to go. We know the same folks. We're, we're kind of casual friends. I think there's this weird thread of Bigfoot and theology and Christianity that I think it could be something. What mm-hmm. do you think? He's like, I'm in. And he was 100% in. And, and then we started talking about Bigfoot in the beginning, but quickly it got into all the blurry creatures, which is everything from UFOs, aliens, giants, skinwalkers, Wendigo, all the weird stuff. I think we jumped into a stream and and it just kind of took us where it was going to go. And I don't think we really had a lot of say in the matter. <laughs> yeah. No, so, but I, I, and, a, and I think yeah. that, but we always wanted to, you know, being Christians, our goal was to, because that's our foundation and our worldview was to filter all that back through biblical lens and, and, and try to understand it. Because I think the more that we got into this guys, the more we figured that, that people have odd ex- and strange and paranormal experiences than, and Christians do. And there's this, some sort of knee jerk reaction a lot of times for people that, that somehow 
something that is outside the realm of their explanation or what the church talk about will disqualify their faith or mm-hmm. shake their faith. And, and I think not knowingly kind of just being two guys that stumbled into it in some ways, we wanted to try to provide better answers for hard questions. Maybe questions don't even have, they don't have answers. We don't know. We don't know exactly right. what's going on with the UFO thing until one lands on the, you know, on the white house lawn, as mm-hmm. famously says, right. Or we don't, we won't exactly know what's going on with Bigfoot until someone bags one and you know, I don't think that's ever going to happen, but you know, pulls one out, pulls one out of the forest per se, right? You don't have these answers, but what you can do is, is talk to people that put in 10,000 hours and most, most of our guests come from a commonality in, in faith yeah. and try to, and, and, and try to provide better answers that frankly fit, you know, there's a, if we look at the, our Bibles as Christians, there's so much weird stuff in there that I think a lot of times it gets glossed over because it one, it becomes, it's uncomfortable and two, it isn't the most conducive to a five part sermon on Sundays. Right. So For it, sure. it's easier to skip over some of that stuff than to try to address it, especially, you know, especially being so separated in time from, you know, from a middle Eastern culture where these things where, you know, where our scriptures were written, you mm-hmm. know, 4,000 years ago, right? It, it, we are sometimes just in, in some ways prisoners of our, you know, of our separation in time. And, and so we're just trying to go back and understand some of these things and, 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 and then pull common threads. And so mm-hmm. it, it, I don't think it was intentional. It, I, I always had an interest in Bigfoot and on my end, you know, used to watch Finding Bigfoot and they never found anything, you know, spoiler alert. Sorry right. if you watch the show. They're not going <laughs> to, they don't find anything, right? <laughs> but yeah, that's interesting. I always yeah. find it uh, like the concept of thinking about, well, what was life like before Christ died on the cross and resurrected, like it says in Colossians, that he disarmed all rulers, principalities, and powers through his death, burial, and resurrection. Meaning I think that within the worldview that we operate today, especially coming out of like a Renaissance post-enlightenment period, we're very materialistic people, even as Christians, that uh, we often forget that the Bible is full of wonder, right? And full of enchantment. Uh, It makes me like, just think about how interesting or even more paranormal the world may have been prior to the sacrifice of Christ, because I think that had paranormal effects all throughout time, especially if we're talking about what could be preternatural or supernatural uh, entities like, let's say, Bigfoot, uh, and not seeing ma- very many of them around today, but they're elusive. But maybe these things, there was a lot of them at one point of time, you know, uh, yeah. which is something interesting to think about. But I have a really interesting question for you guys, because you're talking about Bigfoot. I've never really heard about, you know, how he can just disappear and like things like that. Is there any relation to like the Loch Ness monster with that too? Like the, the Loch, Ness, Loch Ness monster kind of disappear sometimes that it could be some preternatural type of uh, entity or being. It's funny because I'm editing this week's episode about a guy on a military base and he had a Bigfoot. His best friend had an encounter on the base and older guys were reti- tired, high security clearance. And it comes on the base, comes on the runway. And this guy's doing the patrols because he got aircraft coming in at night. And he and he, you know, he flips on code 17. Everyone comes out of the base and they track this thing into the into the woods and then it just disappears. It's uh, just no. gone. Oh, well, well, better said, yeah, No, well, I mean, they track it. So get this. They track it to a ditch. Where, and these guys are all alive. Like, you know, all their weapons are alive. He, as he said, there's a bunch of 20 year olds with automatic weapons that are, that have cornered what it's intruder. Right. And, and right. this guy is, is freaked out saying, man, this wasn't a person. Right. But they, they, they get into a ditch where it's cornered. Yeah. And they have, they actually have motion sensors on the hill behind it. And they, none of it goes yeah, off. And rabbit, they, rabbits sent, uh, will set off these yeah. motion sensors. So they had a, many false alarms from like little tiny animals setting this off. He's, there's no way it could have got out without us seeing it or, or tracking it. And it just, it's they like it down and vanish. And it, it's gone, mm. which is, it's just one, that's one story, yeah. right? And, and that's one story. Ton, that's just this ton, week. Ton, yeah. That's just this week. There's a ton yeah. of these where there's this like sort of dematerializing, right? Like, but there's, there's stories about people raising up a shotgun and, and these things on their porch and then it, it's gone. It's not that they look away. It's not that it's like the, it was a blink of an eye. It's just, it just is gone. And again, right. These are people's stories. So, but there's enough of them where you go, Hey, there's gotta there be something to something, this. There's something to this, right? right? And, and then, yeah. and then, and then you get all the other weird, really odd stuff like orbs and even people with a UFO connection. And you go, I, and this is just me. I tend start to lean to, to start to lean towards maybe there's some interdimensionality. Like, and and this is you know obviously you, you get in the weeds with this kind of stuff. But scientifically, you talked about scientific, right? We live in this empirical era where everything is measured, and and that's why we when things we call supernatural or even the miraculous, we didn't we did an interview on miracles with Dr. Craig Keener and you have these things that all it means is just, it's, it's something that happens. It's outside of the natural order, right? It mm-hmm. breaks the natural laws. And so these things will happen, these sort of an anomalous things, you know, how do you quantify that? And that is, is hard 
But there's enough of this that you go, if, if one of these is true, then then we have to reconsider. And we know that mathematically, if, if you, you know, if you buy mathematics as a uh you, as as a solid foundation or a solid practice that they they can mathematically prove something on a, on a, on the measure of like eleven dimensions, right? These, mm-hmm. and so if, if we go down quantum's in in that in that way, then you go okay. Well, there's we know there's other dimensions mathematically we can prove this. So if that's the case, then do we have something that's able to you know? They can get into weirdly weird conversations, but maybe it makes sense. Like you know, if God if God lives outside of time. Right. We get into a crazy dimensional yeah. <laughs> conversation, but there's something there. And well, he- Heiser put it really good on an episode we did with him. He said, you know, like I, he's like, I, I'm fully, I believe in science, but science can only tell us what happens in, in, you know, our three dimensions. But the Bible says there's another realm and science. You can't, you know, you can't use science to explain the other realm. And yeah. he, he, he had a really good way of mat- saying that, you know, on earth we can taste, touch and smell things. And that's what science can tell us about. Mm. But there's this other realm that science can't explain and so the weird part about our show is there's a physicality to all of this so there's a physicality to ufos and people retrieving these metals that don't exist here or craft parts or anti-gravity you know stories of of interacting with the technology it's it's very strange Mm -hmm. and then bigfoot gets shot sometimes and leaves hair it on footprints it was footprints around footprints famously and, yeah yeah and there's a you know there are people who've done genetic studies on it and it comes back unknown that's the hard part is it's 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 sort of here but sort of not here and uh-huh. i think that's why we haven't pulled one out of the woods because we're not dealing with just normal you know undocumented animal here we're dealing with something else and- yeah no, it's interesting too. Is that I mean, from us, like we both come from Andrew and I, we both come from the reform background. I think one of the challenges that we've had, like with our podcast too, is just really trying to really make an emphasis on like the unseen realm is like a real, a tangible thing that Scripture talks about. And I think some of it, you know, with the reform camp and just sometimes people in general, we've seen from our podcast and people that we've interacted with, you know, the same thing too. The Renaissance and Enlightenment period. I think there's sort of a prejudice towards materialism. But then we take those prejudices and we sort of take a prejudice towards the uh, material versus the unmaterial that we can't see with our naked eye. And I think that's one of the challenges that the church as a whole has. So one of the, I mean, obviously the world's crazy right now, but one of the most amazing things is that, you know, people who are heavily involved in the new age and the alcohol, like that's exploding. But there's also tons and tons of people that we've interviewed who've come to Christ out of the new age, but they all have these crazy experiences that because they've gone, they've explored the supernaturals in ways that God says off, that's off limits, you know, like right. Heiser would even say too, like God's not trained to be a killjoy. You know, he has ways to experience him. Like in God's presence, there's fullness of joy, right? right. But there's people who experience in a way that God says, don't do that. You're going to open yourself up to things that are not, that are going to be spiritually dangerous to you. But a mm-hmm. lot of times people will come out of the new age, say they've astral projected or they had, you know, some sort of situation where they're, they're experiencing like an abduction, like an actual like alien abduction. They call out to Jesus and the, and the abduction stops. They're like, well, what was that? And that leads them to go to a Bible. And then they, by way of that, they, they become converted, they come to Christ. But there's a lot of churches where if a new ager came and told them their legitimate story, they would probably find some ways to explain it away and say, no, that's just all in your head, you know, and that's a real challenge. And so I've, uh, I've gotten to the point where a couple of years ago, you know, like I feel like almost the conversation we have is a total normal thing and it's fun. There's a couple of years ago, if someone come up and told me that like some sort of story or experience like that, I would be very much having a willing suspension of disbelief. But now it doesn't surprise me. I think I had a conversation with a lady who was, I was, I was talking to her and she was talking about her uh, being at Burning Man and that came by way of me talking to her saying, well, you know, are you, are you using psychedelics? And you know, yeah. And I said, well, so uh, what's it like to contact those green entities at three o'clock in the morning? And she was taken back that I told her that. And I, mm-hmm. and she, she admitted to that and I believed her, but I used it as a catalyst to sh- be able to share the gospel with her. So I think when you actually acknowledge the reality of that realm through the lens of scripture, it's a really powerful um, apologetic. What, what are your thoughts, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's something that we do need to think about 
as Christians as being thinking people, critically thinking people and dwelt by the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, it's nothing that we should be, uh, you know, afraid of to even think about that it could somehow destroy our faith. And I understand that it's people can struggle with things that they don't have answers for. But what's funny is being a Christian, we're the most... Uh, supernatural people in a sense that we believe that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ actually had physical uh, ramifications, but not just that, but an actual spiritual ramification that I was dead in my trespasses and sins. And now I've been brought to life. Like that's a, that's a supernatural experience that any Christian uh, ultimately has gone through. But um, in terms of what, what could be considered blurry? I'm just, I'm just wondering too, in uh, with the, with the Loctex monster, cause I want to know, are there like uh, <laughs> any types of, uh, uh, what is it people like eyewitness accounts to where maybe it's like disappeared or something like that. I know it's in a lake, but even bringing it back to yeah. Bigfoot, is there like some similar, like cohesive line of evidence that shows that a lot of these like cryptid cryptic or cryptid, I, I think I'm saying it wrong. Cryptid yeah. type animals, like sometimes can just materialize and dematerialize. I I'm, think, I'm really interested. Well, all the skinwalker Wendigo stuff is in Bigfoot and even modern day werewolf sightings are in that space. I think, I think Loch Ness is just like a remnant of, uh, like, like most, pe most people think it's just a plesiosaurus. It's just this dinosaur that, you know, or water animal that just can go underwater for days on end and comes out in the night and appears to people. There's not a lot of paranormal that I've, I've researched quite a bit about it. It's interesting, but it, it's There's also spoofed a bunch of times. It's a little boring. It also <laughs> makes it like tough to wade through, right? Because we know people have, have spoofed it. But yeah. I, I do think that there's a lot of, some of the immaterial things are are fascinating. Also, honestly, have are are a lot associated with the occult too. When you talk about skinwalkers and when you talk about even werewolves and the like, and those things are are very demonic. And yeah, and there's a very there's a very bizarre set of circumstances. Yeah, they that, stick in your head a little bit more because they're so terrifying. It's hard not to, you know, it's, is, like, is, it's like a scary yeah. movie. You you remember, you know, there's just certain there's a certain flair that just it just sticks out at you yeah. especially the bigfoot stories too the ones that are just really weird are the ones you remember mm -hmm. and the ones what the ones that are just like oh it came out and left or like it popped its head out of the water and went down it's like there's not a whole lot to go on it, it doesn't really but it's the paranormal stuff that really starts to get your head, wheels turning like wait gotcha did what? It there's did no what? occultic people trying to summon Loch Ness like oh, doing like some weird meditation or chants. I mean, that's the right part of the part of oh, the, the world. Local, yeah. The local wizards of the, the local the local wizards. Scottish wizards. You know, they, <laughs> they, they're they not cast a Scotch, protective they're, spell. Yeah. Yeah. They're trying, to, <laughs> trying to summon Nessie out of there. Napoleon, Napoleon knows about that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, people wanted us to do episodes on that, and I think we're just we'll, we'll probably come around to it at some point. Mm -hmm. But for now, it, it's. It's a little bit, it's just not weird enough to really. Yeah, I get you. I get you. It's, what about, what about we, the. We stick with the weird stuff. Yeah. What about the modern day werewolf thought that you guys get into? I've never heard of anything uh, like oh, that man. before. Tell, tell me what, what is a werewolf then? So they call him dog man. And yeah, the... it's basically just like exactly how you would see it in your mind. It's just like a, like a werewolf creature that, that sort of more terrorizing. See, Bigfoot has neutral encounters but dog man these werewolf creatures i mean it goes all the way back there's a there's a famous story of the beast of jevedon in france that was like terrorizing the community and killed a bunch of people and that's well documented but I, there's there's people that have broken it down that there's like multiple types of these things there's spiritual ones and then there's actual like a physical creature out there too that's that's it walks on two legs it looks like a dog it it's it's stuff out of nightmares, and we have a good friend who has his name's Tony Merkel. He's did a documentary on the Dog Man. He's kind of the Dog Man guy. He spoke at our conference, and we we we, we chat a lot off the you know on the phone about stuff like this. But mm -hmm. it's 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 the creepiest one. Yeah, like that and Wendigos, the Skinwalker stuff. They're all kind of together. I don't know. Some people say that they're shape shifting, and that's possible. Yeah. That's the crazy part about that too. Is there's a lot of ritual stuff right like where you, yeah. there's this is stuff that happens you know we talked to john redbird dover who was the he was a navajo ranger for 30 years and he has really fascinating stories of things that happen on the res which i mean wild stuff right seems very very credible in, in, in these accounts and they're and they're bananas right but the but the talk the, there's a lot of we've done enough talking about this you know there are apparently like satanic ritual demonic ritual things that they can have where people can sort of access this sort of, I don't know, it sounds crazy, shape-shifting, yeah. but this is what, 
supposedly happens with with like a skinwalker is it's there it's there's human sacrifice involved and there's these right. really horrible things that, that people do in order to access this abil- ability did you ever see that uh, 80s movie silver bullet oh that 16. rings a bell Mm-mm. it was with uh that uh, cory Haim. he was in it no but um, i've seen teen wolf yeah hey, well there we go well, there there's go. this crappy i mean we're we kind of have an 80s uh, yeah uh flair on our show it's how we market the show but you know it, it they all look, sort of look the same. Everyone says they kind of have these red glowing eyes. They have this dog face. And it's just, it, it just, you experience pure terror when you see it. And I've heard so many different stories. There's actually a podcast called, uh, uh, I think it's just Dog Man Encounters or something like that. And I, I listened to that for a while. And I had to stop listening to it because those those encounters were so terrifying. I was like, I got to go yeah. back to Bigfoot. This is just, this is way too much while I'm by myself. Mm-hmm. Fixing up in yeah. the, in the basement or something, fixing up a house. I just creep myself out. But uh, yeah, man, I, I I don't know. I don't know what they are, but they're just yeah. one of many blurry creatures out there. Yeah, let me let me ask you this because I'm curious because like I said, the blo- like the blurry creature world is that's where we've, we've only barely tapped into a little bit. We usually deal with yeah, like, the yeah. cults and the new age topics. I mean, UFOs is kind of our strong suit. But um, mm-hmm. when you think of, like with yeah. all the encounters, you think of somebody who experiences something traumatic and they see something that they they don't really recognize. But it's like, they, but they would use things around their environment to describe it. So, do you think, do you think what the like a lot of these eyewitnesses of people who've had encounters with these different blurry creatures, whether it's Bigfoot or even these other accounts of say like a werewolf or you know just any of those categories, do you think that's something that they're tangibly actually seeing, or it might be something where they're so ter- it's something that if the case is supernatural and demonic, it's so terrifying. The only thing they're trying to utilize to describe it is to make describe it using their surroundings the things they do understand to explain what they don't understand like how where do you think that where, where do you think that falls in the, the, that category when it comes to people who've experienced these encounters regardless of the creature i think it reminds me of like our episode with tim alberino he's uh he's sort of modern day Indiana jones guy we went to we just went to peru with him and his whole thing is like he tries to put things in physical terms like maybe aliens are just angels flying around and there's stories in the Bible where they have to get from point A to point B. Yeah, like so, why, yeah. so why we have this very spiritualized version of everything that isn't a, isn't humanity? But a lot of people come on our show say there was this interaction between humans and angels, and their offspring were giants, right? And that's that's sort of the biblical account in Genesis six that a lot of people talk about on our show. And you have two camps. You have people who say that's impossible. There's no way because they bring all this preconceived ideas of what an angel is because they've been taught sort of this medieval, you know, modern perspective of this, but they don't have an ancient one. And so I think a lot of times the physicality of things that we don't understand, we spiritualize it. Oh, you know, like angels are just this chubby things flying around with wings. Well, what if they're a lot, what if they're a lot like us? Cause a lot of people encounter them. They call them the Nordics or the tall blondes and they encountered him in Sodom and Gomorrah, different parts of the Bible. Like, why do we have this, they're like see-through spiritual things that don't have any physical physicality to them. So I think when you go, that's kind of where we started with the show, kind of go back and, and sort of get a real raw sort of alternate history and go into some of these topics. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of, and you kind of move it up to a modern day that, you know, I believe that all flesh was corrupted it wasn't just like a physical rebellion or a moral rebellion. It was, I mean, it wasn't just a moral rebellion. It was a physical, spiritual, technological. Yeah. The ancients were rebelling every single way they could. And I think, I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that they were taking God's creations and they were making chimeras and they were doing all kinds of things to just destroy anything that God made and had the image of God in them. And I still think there's some remnants today because we interviewed mm-hmm. so many people who have these encounters. So, I think I think this stuff is more physical than spiritual. To be yeah. honest, I think people say they run into giants in Afghanistan. People say they run into Bigfoot in places you would never expect. Like, what's it doing in in you know near a city? What's it you know? Why are these things so close to humans sometimes? Right. And you can't just spiritually explain it all away. And I think a lot of people want to do that. But I do think some of the the Wendigo Skinwalker stuff and like demonic stuff is more in the spirit realm it's a spirit that's being manipulated but some of these other things are just they're like uh they're like a chimera they're like a half and half there there's some mm. there's some blend between the physical and the spiritual that that we can see touch it leaves evidence 
those kinds of things. So it's from a scientific perspective, you can say that there is evidence for this. But then there are other creatures that, that can just wisp away. And I think a lot of the UFO encounters, it's like they can manipulate the laws of nature and they can just, maybe they don't disappear. Maybe they just bend gravity and you can't see it, right? Yeah. And maybe some of these other creatures can do that too. And they're still there, but you yeah. just can't perceive them. And then, uh, like the predator, like the predator, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I wish I could so that was a I wish I could but... person that that clicking predator sound like that. You know, everyone you knows do. that. Everyone knows that one sound. <laughs> Which I was actually surprised. The recent, you guys see the recent movie, the recent movie Prey. No. no. Oh, okay. It was the most updated like Predator movie on Hulu. It was surprisingly like enjoyable, which I was really surprised by. Okay. Um, Can we get a review by Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> it was it was all right. It was all right, all right, all right. <laughs> um, but check this. This is a, when you talk about like, the ancient world. I think this is interesting, Andrew. I don't know if you know the story, but uh, like our pastor, you may know him, uh, Jeff Durbin. He's under our studio. He's our pastor. But um, in the early days of our church, he was a pastor at Addiction Recovery Center called Calvary Addiction Recovery Center. And so he was just helping people who were coming out of addiction. And uh, he had actually gotten a call from the History Channel, and they're looking to do a special on the whole history of drug use. And he ended up getting an interview, and it turns out the interview was Dean Norris, who played Hank Schrader from Breaking Bad. So mm-hmm. if you actually look up uh, Jeff Durbin, Breaking Bad, Dean Norris, you actually see the interview with him. And he was just asking him about the whole history of drug use. And, you know, in the documentary, it's on the History Channel. It was called The Stoned Ages. And it was just about the whole history of people utilizing, you know, different drugs throughout the years, whether it's like some sort of psychedelic or something of that nature. And and really, honestly, a lot of it's like, man, there's really nothing new under the sun. People taking psychoactive substances to get into an altered state of consciousness to contact an entity. Like you saw mm-hmm. that depicted in the movie 300. You know, you have, yeah. they want to get the word from the high priest. So they have this one lady very promiscuously take a psychedelic and she does what she does to get in contact with something. That's, that's the message that the high priest has. So you have the that, yeah. right. You have yeah. the Oracle and then, and so even like a lot of modern movies, there's a lot of things that are depicting like real realities, like the Doctor, Str- the Doctor Strange movies. The second one, there's a huge, there's a n- big point in the, uh, in the, very pivotal moment where a, a large place where a scene takes place in the whole movie is this temple that's up in the high places. And so this is like a Disney secular you know, company that's making these, you know, these movies and people can say what you have about Disney and, and how they're just burnt, you know, they're yeah. losing money and every <laughs> other movie is bombing at the box office. But, the, but Dr. Strange, what's articulate in the second Dr. Strange movie, this temple up in the high places, they're, they're tapping into something that's real and tangible. And even at the end of the Dr. Strange movie, when he all of a sudden, it's very animated and it's, this isn't what you'd see in real life. You see like a third eye go on his forehead. Mm-hmm. So you do see a lot of real modernization or sort of like a resurgence, you know, of the occult or as, as right. uh, I believe it's uh, Peter Jones who gave the term like neo-paganism. It's basically pagan, ancient paganism repackaged for today. Yeah. And so a lot of times like what we see, you know, and stuff that we've explored, like, man, this is new, but it's also, it's not new. Like even the UFO conversation, there's a lot of times when you look at, all the modern day disclosure option uh, things. And it's very politically charged. You know, a lot of times people will disavow it because it's the Biden administration that's dealing with the disclosure thing when it was Trump just four years ago. But the reality is the idea of uh, objects in the sky moving in ways that defy the laws of physics. This has been something that's been going on for a long time. There's a reason why in Renaissance paintings, you see pictures of circular like objects up in the sky and so, mm-hmm. like, one of the things I realized, too, like, as a Christian is that, you know, when you look at these things, whether it's somebody who's had some sort of encounter, whether it's, like, a blurry creature, or in this case, you know, looking at the conversations surrounding a UFO sighting, whether it's Dr. Stephen Greer or Commander David Fraser, who was flying, you know, an F-16 and saw uh, these, this Tic Tac encounter, well, all these things are happening in God's world. So, like Walter Martin would say in his book, The Kingdom of the Occult, like all things are created by whatever is whatever is going on. This is existing in God's world, where all things were created by Christ and for Christ. So we need to be able to figure out. We we can't just stick our heads in the sand. Like we have to be able to wrestle through and figure out what these things are. Uh, I, I think it's interesting. Is it what the case you're making is something we've talked about on our show? We we've talked about how we we actually made a case that that atheism is is dying out. That, and yeah. I think you, you make you make an interesting point like this this rise of the new age and neo paganism 
I think we're reaching a, a time in, in this timeline where people are have a hunger for spirit, spirituality, whatever you want to call it. People will tell you they're spiritual, right? But there's this, I really believe there's this movement now that, that people are going to, are, are looking for something to believe in. And I think that's why we see the, the popularity of ancient aliens for one, which is completely the Anunnaki and, and all that thing. It's, it's, this, it's this explanation for, you know, it, in, in a lot of ways, like you say, it's nothing new, right? It's this, it's this alternative explanation for our creation. It sounds a lot like the Enuma Elish and the yeah. serpent being on the top and serpent being the creator of God and all these, it's not new, but I think we're moving in this space where people, because of the things that are happening and because of the, of the atmosphere, you know, of the, and the mainstream talking points and, and even what people are seeing, you know, we yeah. talk about the UFO disclosure thing, people are moving to a point where they want to believe in something and, and not believe in nothing. Right. And, and, and it, it's, it's really led to a crazy rise. I believe in the new age. You talk about psychedelics, just listen to the, to the, to the discourse that's happening in mainstream about, about sort of the mainstreaming of psychedelics now, like, you know, Joe Rogan is one of those big proponents of that and, and they're normalizing this. Right. And what they're, and you made a great point. And this is exactly where we feel as, as well is that this is an access point to the supernatural realm. And it's not how we're supposed to do it. It's not the way that God intended it. We're supposed to access God through the channels that he is, he has ordained and created for us and be, be it worship prayer, you know, fasting, those things that he has, he has said, these are the ways, right? And it's not yeah. because God doesn't want us to to meet with him and experience it, because this is the way that he is, he's designed mm-hmm. it, right? But there are these other ways around, right? And these things are massively exploding. Yeah. And the irony, and we've done a couple of shows, is that people are seeing the same things. And so if this is really just some experience in your brain, why is everyone seeing machine else? Why is everybody having these experiences with the same kind of entities behind this, right? Yeah. If everyone's having their own journey in their in their mind on, you know, on ayahuasca or psychedelics, DMT, whatever, right? Then I mean, that to me says they are accessing a plane, talk about astral projection, all these weird things. They're accessing something they're not supposed to do in a way they're not supposed to do it. The people are hungering for this. And and I and I feel like that's yeah. why you guys are cultish, right? I think that's mm-hmm. why we're seeing these. Like the UFO cult thing and these and the new age thing and all these yeah. different belief systems that really are just repackagings of really old things as you talked about. Whether you want to go all the way back to the to the oracles of Delphi and you know, even back to the golden age as we talk about pre flood when you know people were worshiping the the gods of old, whether it be El yeah. and Baal and 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 all these all these old, old entities that have just well, sort they- of they're good at marketing, right? They're just yeah. remarketing themselves. Well, I feel like the lust of, well, I was going to say like the, the lust for knowledge is, is the sort of the original deception. And I don't think it's gone anywhere. And I think that what well, we made it, we made a strong case on our show that human beings got all this occult knowledge from somebody, something. We didn't just make this stuff up. We didn't just right. wake up one day and have all this. How do we know how to mine metals? How do we know to go to war? How do we know how to, to rebel against God. We were taught how to do that. And the, there's a lot of support in the Bible that, you know, shows us that, yeah, human beings learned. Or even psychedelics. So I just talk about yeah. like, like, have you ever looked into the process of how to create DM, make to activate DMT? How do they it learn? Is how, like, do, how do we know? How in the world did you have to take this plant and then you got to cook it and then you got to do something else to it. And then you got to make a tea and then you got to activate it this way. It's yeah. like a, it's like Betty Crocker. Right. And I, I it seems to me that it seems just way too complicated for you to be like, Hey, by the way, we just grabbed, you know, I can grab every plant in my backyard. I've, I've got an acre and a half here and, and, and I can mess with all, and I'm not going to come up with that. Mm-hmm. I, I, to, and, and I'm not, I don't want to discredit like humanity Human is very ingenious and, yeah. and, and be able to do a, we do a lot, you know, in our, and what God has given us and our abilities, but there are some things that are just like, man, that. Yeah. We were just in Peru and we were seeing it all this ancient construction that just is beyond what human beings can yeah, build we today. We can't replicate it now, which is, just, we don't know how uh-huh. they did it. And it's, there's this, it, it's just, there's these little clues that the ancient world was, way weirder and way more in rebellion towards God than I think we can even imagine. And yeah. if you want to know what these creatures are, where they come from and why they do what they do, you it's kind of like we're sort of, we get into alternate history mm. a lot. Yeah. So. And that's, and there's definitely lots of rabbit holes. You can like go down that yeah. route. I think what's also fascinating is that, you know, when you do look at, there is sort of a danger because like Stephen Bancars, you know, he's been, a, you know, he wrote the book, you know, he was, uh, did some stuff with, with Heiser as well too. And he wrote the yeah, book yeah, Second Coming of the New Age is that like he got into the new age by way of ancient aliens. And yeah. so not, not to say that they are, they're exploring some real tangible topics that he didn't really have any Christ. He grew up in a Christian household. He didn't really have any sort of answers as far as how to give an account for that. 
you know. But I do think it's right. what, what's fascinating to me, and uh, Andrew, I'll get your thoughts on this too, is that if if all that's true, and like you know, you were ta- we were talking on the phone uh, on Saturdays for a little bit before we came up, before we did this a little collab, is that with all that you guys saw in Peru and these ancient civilizations and how they're intact, it, really, if, if all that is really true, and there's that's really they were in contact with higher beings, you know, whatever you want to call them, it does seem that. The scripture where it talks about how God makes the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, where you have like all these civilizations, for example, like with advanced technology that are super highly evolved because they're tapped into things. Uh, like you look at even like the Aztecs in the movie Apocalypto, like even in how yeah. those temples were shaped, like those ideas really didn't come out of vacuum, especially when you look at the whole history of human sacrifice and things like that. But exactly. um, honestly, when you look at, okay, so this person gets born in a manger, fully God, fully man, is born in a manger, lives a super humble life, and is crucified on a, on a Roman cross. Like, that sort of entrance, and he makes a full conquest over all principalities and powers that are empowering all these other kingdoms with all this other architecture. I mean, on some level, it puts a lot more, like, depth and gravitas to... Like what Christ yeah. did. Uh, what do you think about so, Andrew? Do you have any? Brilliant. What What do you have? Do you have any thoughts on that? Because I think I'd like to hear your yeah. thoughts. Yeah, I've just been I've been working through some of these questions uh, myself because it's not typically the realm of thought I uh, I dabble in. But I I listen to a podcast called the Theology Pug Cast. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but there's an episode called The Return of the Old Gods, and they go into a conversation about about a book someone had written talking about Baal, uh, the Asherah. And things of that nature where how do we handle in this world today after Matthew 28, 18 through 20, where Jesus is saying all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me, go therefore heaven and on earth, right? And then in Psalm chapter two, where it says that all the nations are going to come essentially to obey Christ, lest they be crushed. So thinking about uh, our history or history of the nations, making covenant with God, the God of the Bible, right? After the cross, how, how, how do we handle it today when we think about these things have been defeated in the past. Say there were these powers that had extreme amounts of power ruling over the nations. I know you mentioned Daniel chapter uh, 10 earlier. I think that's when uh, Gabriel comes to Daniel and he's like, prince sorry, Persian. I was uh, the prince of Persia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, an well, uh, angel comes to Daniel and he's like, I'm sorry, I was held up. There was someone yeah. fighting with yeah. the spirit over the prince of Persia. Yeah. So yeah. say, say that's prior to Christ. How are we supposed to think about that in the realm we live in today where Christ is King encompassing all spheres over heaven and on earth? Like, are we seeing like a rebellion essentially to Christ within the world we're seeing today? And people are trying to dabble within all of these uh, spiritual experiences, yet they don't have the same power or level or magnitude as they had before. Cause I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like I go out to uh, Planned Parenthood every single Wednesday and I plead for the life of unborn children. And I say, mothers, fathers, please do not murder your children. Right. But it seems like there's something blinding them sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if we think about old gods of the past, we can think about Moloch and people did the same thing. They yeah. sacrificed their children on the altar of Moloch a statue made of brass that was hollowed out and fire was put underneath it to glow his hands. And they would put the babies on the hands and they'd beat the drums to drown out the screams of the babies. Like these are things that really happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, how, how am I trying to think about the power that Christ has today and what's going on with the, the rebellion of people and the breaking of the covenant that the nations had made with Christ. Does, does that, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a great question. I've thought about that a lot on our show too. Like the difference between, you know, I asked guys like Heiser, like, what is it, what exactly happens in your opinion on the cross? You know, and he talks a lot about the transfiguration, how he goes on the mountain and he shines and he takes just three disciples with him. And then there's this, this, this last miracle that's, uh, you know, before he goes to the cross and it's, it's, it's sort of glossed over by a lot of Christians. And I think, I think it's a complicated, we go into that a lot on our show. I think all I can say is we've learned a lot. Like when I was a kid, I grew up thinking, idols could be anything you know you watch too much football that's an idol and i think that's just like a a very silly christianese answer because ancient people weren't worshiping stones they were worshiping entities that that inhabited these things so they would do their child sacrifice and all this other stuff and then an entity would come into whatever they were worshiping it wasn't that they were stupid and they were walking around banging sticks together and worshiping a tree they got something from their exchange and I think we've talked a lot about this on the 
to show that ancient people weren't stupid. The gods of Egypt were giving them something. They were sacrificing their children willingly because they were receiving something. Uh, it wasn't the God of Israel. It wasn't, it wasn't just, it wasn't in their heads. It wasn't make believe they were building things and they actually had powers. And I think that scares a lot of Christians because they, they, they just think, oh, I watch too much football. That, that's, that's an idol for me. I need, to, I need to stop doing that. And I think idol worship is something completely different. And you have to understand it from an ancient perspective and, and realize that they were building not just these dynasties, places like you know, the Holy Lands. They were building them all over the world. Mm-hmm. And they had similar knowledge and they were all doing the same thing. How? Why? How did all these societies separate from each other over massive distances build the same stuff right. and, do this, and do the same things? They, they were in rebellion. They were taught how to rebel in a way. And, but, I, but I think that there was an exchange there. And so I think to say that is that, yeah, the, the gods of the, the Old Testament were, were real. They were probably, they had some authority in some areas. And then Christ's death, I think, releases it maybe back to human beings being mm-hmm. in control of each other. And so there's this wound, there's this stripping of power. But, that, but you know, even the demons in the New Testament say, have you come? Is this our time? And they thought Jesus' first coming was, you know, his second coming. And so there's still this remnant of evil. There's still this stuff going on. I don't know if they have the same powers that they did before the, the crucifixion, but it still lingers. And then that's where the debate is of, of how much power, where are they? You know, are they locked up? Are they released? Are, what is a demon? What isn't a demon? How much can yeah. we be influenced? It's a really good question. Yeah. I think we just give a lot of context of mm-hmm. what the ancient world was like, but I don't know. I don't know yeah. how much freedom they have to well, do whatever they're doing. Yeah, do you know what's also just interesting? And you can give me your thoughts on this. I mean, we always look at those those examples we're talking about the ancient civilizations who would do human sacrifices or even you know as christians you know we would talk like i'm a byproduct of like purity culture like the whole josh yeah. harris movement and stuff like that and oh, I yeah. Re- oh I re- yeah yeah like he's dating goodbye let's <laughs> yeah. go yeah i remember like just josh harris he was like he was like the justin timberlake of homeschooling so Dude, yes yes <laughs> but yes. I, I remember like him you know, give it talking about Corinth and the sexual immorality of all that sort of stuff. And it's, and it's obviously interesting in contrast to him now, you know, totally deconstructed and walking away from the faith, yeah. which, which obviously breaks yeah. my heart, you know, and, and similar people. But honestly, like what's interesting is that like a lot of what's depicted in Corinth and even through the lens of like purity culture and even my background, like I didn't really think about the demonic entities that were attached to that type of worship in the sense where like Paul uh, gives instruction in Romans how we're supposed to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And every religion requires sacrifice. You know, with, even if you think about like, the ancient Mayans, they were being consistent with the same principle yeah. in Romans 12. They are just doing it like in a wrong way. Yeah. And so like when you look at, you know, every ancient religion, they were always utilizing some form of like sexual immorality as a catalyst to use their body or someone else's body as a living sacrifice. And that's, that's all safe and normal. Like as long as it's back there in ancient times. All right. Yeah. I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on here for a second. <laughs> all right. It. So I'm going to do a little Alex Jones here for a second, but, um, uh, but honestly, but if we be real, when we look at something like Epstein Island, you know, you think right. about Epstein, you, know, you remember, you remember how crazy Epstein didn't kill himself was when it came to the whole, oh, yeah. when it came to the, you know, just, it's, it was, it was like a trending hashtag. I mean, the memes, I came up with a couple of memes myself and a couple of Facebook posts, but honestly, you have a bunch of people who were the ruling class of the world, right? And who are all sort of connected to this group that has to deal with, on some levels, like sex with underage children, they're being blackmailed. It's a weird, strange rabbit hole. And of course, people say that you're crazy. This is some unique incidence. But honestly, if you look at that and you look at even like the shape of that temple in Epstein Island, it looks very Dude. similar. It looks very yeah. similar to like a lot of things that are out there. And this is something yeah. that regardless of what camp of like, I'm from the reform camp, you know, you guys have your camp. Well, like we're all, and even people like, who are more on the tenfold hat, like you have people like Sam Tripoli or even Joe Rogan, or they've all, all of us are looking at this and we're like, this is crazy. We have, we all know this thing exists. There's people who are doing despicable things, which I, I wouldn't even want to talk about. And it's there. It's incontrovertible. Like that's no different from that, from there, but there is something that's truly like tangibly, you know, evil that, mm. you know, as a Christian, even the, you know, like 
almost like the, you know, especially like with 2020, you know, it was a challenging in the sense that I feel like every single headline was, was a, was the opening, was the cover of Awake magazine from the Watchtower Bible Track Society. Right. You know, so, meteorites yeah. going down. You look at like, you look at <laughs> like, was it Vegas being completely empty? You had, uh, Vegas being completely uh, vacant, you had Times Square being completely empty, like right around the cusp of like March 2020, when you just saw how crazy everything was. And like, even like that, even that, it's almost like part and partial to like right now when people have seen things like Epstein Island, you see all that's happened in 2020 where people don't trust anything the yeah. media tells you. It, there's there's huge there's this huge willing suspension of disbelief, where it's almost created this vacuum where it, it could be a good thing where people are really spiritually hungry. Like 2020 was an amazing year of, I've actually had people on the podcast who came to Christ as a result yeah. of just really questioning the world around them, and that led them to the Bible and to embrace Jesus as the Lord and Savior, and that's great. But there's also a, a huge vacuum, and even like the whole Epstein Island thing. Like as a Christian, I can give an account as to why, like, I have points of reference, like, in Corinth, like, that was happening in ancient times, right? That's probably what Paul was dealing with in the first century, the churches that he was dealing with. We're seeing a new, modernized, updated iOS update of that. And other people, they don't really have a worldview of how to account for it, and they could go so many different directions. So I think one of the ways to really address it is to try and at least acknowledge the tangible reality of something physical mm-hmm. like Epstein Island, but also acknowledge the supernatural aesthetic behind it. Yeah. We live in a weird time too, because I don't think ancient people had a belief problem. I think it was more, do you believe in the serpent or do you believe in the God of Israel? And they, yeah. and they, they had, you know, they believed that they're like, like Luke was saying earlier, the serpent was the king and that he was going to give them the freedom and that God was unjust and didn't give us this knowledge. And, put these restrictions on us and i think we've we're in a weird time where you have a big belief problem for the last couple hundred years people just they're apathetic they don't care whatever mm-hmm. i'm just gonna go on and do my thing i'm just gonna endlessly distract myself but now like you said t- i think 2020 woke people up to this there's there there's something behind the scenes i don't know what it is yeah. someone's pulling the, i mean how in the hell did the whole world shut down it's just it's crazy and everyone was like you know just they woke up they just woke up like something's not right here. And I think for, from our perspective, the world is educating these people with ancient aliens and other crazy ideas. And we have a lot of them come on, you know, mm-hmm. we get a lot of emails from people like, I listen to your show and it makes sense now. And, I, and I've come back to Christ too, because, you know, I, I experienced this weird thing when I was a kid and nobody and nobody in church would talk about it. And I think people are starting to understand that the the weird stuff now gives me permission to believe the weird stuff back then. Moses' staff turning to a snake and other weird stories that you, as a modern person reading the Bible, even a believer could go, mm, maybe they just sort of, that was sort of just, allegory. you know, allegory. That didn't actually right. happen. But what if it actually happened? And so I think when you give permission to people, everything, all the weird stories, like Heiser says, if it's weird, it's important, happen. Mm-hmm. If you just... If you just believe that they happen the way that they say they happen, and that's where I'm at, yeah, then it's not hard to believe the Bible. And I think, in a modern in a modern lens, and I think stories like paranormal stories, just for whatever reason, can be a gift in your life yeah. because then you can go, oh, I can believe all this other paranormal stuff that I've always kind of wrote off in my mind mm. my whole life. Sorry, that was a lot, but no, you're uh, that's good. No, 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 you're, no, you're I good. have one thing to say, Andrew. I, I think it's your, it. your point to uh, abo- the abortion thing and then to Moloch. I, uh, and then you bring up Epstein, right? Like, look at the untouchables. Not one person has been prosecuted who was on the Lolita yeah. Express or went to the island. Yeah. A- and I think you have to start wondering. And, and we talk about the abortion thing as well. Like, it, what are they really I, doing? I just don't think it really, I don't think it ever stopped. I think it's got repackaged. I, I, I think yeah. that this is still part of the same Sacrifice. cult. So he uses cultish, right? The same practice that this is i just don't think it ever stopped and now it became a thing of convenience but it's still in, the end is still the same whether it be trafficking of children we're, like we have this whole Nate and i talked for a while today just about the jim caviezel film and, and that's a big talking point right now right sound yeah. of freedom with tim ballard's story right it's a real mm-hmm. story this guy tim ballard i follow him on on instagram and everything and he's he's really rescuing kids and people want to dissociate that and say that's not real this is a q this is this is a you know it's political we're politicizing it but 
this is happening. Like yeah. this is for real the abuse and in some cases the sacrifice, whether it be abortion or even other really horrible things that didn't, I don't even like to give attention or talk about, but these things happen. Yeah. I don't think it ever stopped. And I, and I think it's shocking to people, but I, I, I think that these things continue. And what Paul says that like, you know, our, our battle's not against flesh and blood, but against the principal, you know, against the powers of principalities, right? I, I, your question is fascinating about the way that things, when Jesus came, how that changed, right? I, I don't think necessarily these things went away. I, I think he defeated him. He took the keys of sin and death, right? He, he, he dealt them the death blow, mm-hmm. but we're still in this time where they still operate. And, and I, I don't think they've ever changed their ways. So you talk about the Aztecs, we talked about the Mayans, talk about human sacrifice, it's still continuing. Mm-hmm. It just looks different, right? And, yeah. and and I don't know that they, the whole power thing is an interesting question, right? It's more underground, but like, are they still trying to get power from this, create some sort of rit, rite and ritual from this? Perhaps, but it, it continues. And, mm-hmm. and, and that part is the, uh, I mean, it, it, you can go to dark places, as Jeremiah said, you can go down some crazy rabbit holes with this. And and I think ultimately all it does is it, it, it's just the most pertinent reminder that, that we need a savior. And, and, and also a reminder that Jesus is king, the king of kings. He's on the throne. He defeated all of this. And this is the death. This is the death. This is the death thrall of 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 the darkness. Um, yeah, gas was kind of saying. Yeah, it really yeah. feels like that. That is it is it is the as they try to just sort of collateral damage everything on, on, on their way to to judgment right i i just we, we talk to people on the show that, that about uh, trafficking and about some of the things that happen mm. in there and actually that's one of that's one of the things i actually personally try to spend some of my finances and time on i have a, I, have, I have friends that run nonprofits that, that that fund safe houses for for kids and women that rescue their trafficking and, and i just i think it's fascinating if we stop in this moment of time to see yeah the way that the way the mainstream is pushing back on this the way that it's being discredited. We're, there's more people in slavery right. now than ever been in, in, in the history of the world, and yet we, you know, the vast majority of mainstream media, it's media doesn't it wants, wants to push it away. Yeah, and that's not. It's not. It shouldn't be surprising to anyone that has that that grounds himself mm-hmm. in in their faith because this is dark. Ask dark. The yeah, no, ask the Andrew, no, Andrew, I'll, I'll let you jump in with the question you had in a second, but just one one thing, just in common, is that man is I haven't yet seen the film. Like I listened, no, I listened yeah. to the. Uh, the Sean, what's his name? He was the interview of the Jim Caviezel on, what is it, Sean Ryan? Is it Sean Ryan show? This is the really popular podcast. Yeah, Maybe. it's it's a really- We've yeah, all seen the same clips. Yeah, yeah I so I, I just about, saw yeah. some of the viewers talking about, you know, Jim Caviezel was talking about his experience and like filming it. And, you know, it was definitely an interesting interview, but man, it's just, one of the things that was really troubling about the media pushback regarding that is that honestly, like Steve Hassan, who really wrote the book Combating Cult Mind Control and a book called Freedom of Mind, which was really talking about the bite cult model. Have you guys heard of that? No. No, so honestly, you, this, this is a whole other rabbit hole. But uh, So yeah. Steve Hassan, he's not a Christian, mm-hmm. but he wrote a book called Combating Cult Mind Control. His his story, very cliff notes, is that he got into a, uh, he went to a weekend retreat that was about like world and social justice uh, of, that, of that sorts. But turns out he ended up getting totally uh, sleep to de- sleep deprived and got really indoctrinated and within two weeks he completely isolated and cut off from all his friends and family uh, and believed and he got caught into the moonies like he was a devout true believer believing that sung young moon was the messiah and he and he that was his world for like two years until he actually got into a car accident by way of sleep deprivation and so like back in the 70s you know if we kind of go into the cult world versus the blurry world which is kind of blurry in and of itself yeah. But um, he ended up crashing this van and he broke his leg in a couple different ways where he actually had to, they had to use the jaws of life to get him out of the van because it was that badly destroyed. But um, he ended up calling his sister saying, hey, because he had a moment of sobriety because all of a sudden you're not sleep deprived, you're not doing 10 different things. And all of a sudden he had a moment to think of his family member and he said, hey, I'm not, uh, you know, just I'm here, just want to let you know I'm thinking of you, but just don't tell my parents. Well, his sister didn't tell, uh, didn't listen to him and told his parents and they ended up doing an intervention. And so like back in the 70s, you had this whole movement called the deprogramming movement, which was all about trying to do interventions and forcing people to unthink and decompartmentalize, but end up having a lot of issues because within it, in order to do these interventions, actually, you actually had to kidnap people. So like cults actually pushed back and there's a whole bunch of legal replications where that couldn't happen anymore. And so Steve Hassan took this approach. Well, anyways, I'm jumping ahead, but uh, Steve ended up going through like five or six days of being deprogrammed. And like the, within like day five or six, he ended up just like curling into a ball because he 
what he talks about when it comes to cult mind control, cult indoctrination, how there's a cult identity that suppresses your true self. And usually you'll have a fluctuation between like the cult identity and like, and the true person. Yeah, so he had this yeah. cult identity that was suppressing his true self for two years. And so when he finally like found his little sort of like true self in a sense, like he was curled up in a ball and was like bawling his eyes out for like two hours because he didn't even know how to feel emotions for like two years. Mm, And so he has a whole, yeah. So, I mean, he has a whole, like his book combating cult mind control. He has a whole interview on the Joe Rogan experience, which is fascinating. Mm. So he has been a, he's not a Christian, but you know, he bears God's image. So he really does a good example of talking about the effects of like thought reform on people and how cults affect people in a negative Mm. sense. And it was very interesting because he was one of the most outspoken critics against QAnon, and he even has a book called The Cult of Trump, right? So regardless mm-hmm. of where your audience stands politically, <laughs> that he actually, one of his biggest criticisms of QAnon is that it deters, like, some of the whole the whole QAnon narrative, it actually deters away from, like, real issues regarding sex trafficking and, yeah. and actually focusing on real organizations that can actually help those people, which is very interesting because yeah. the people in Rolling there Stone, these other articles, they are utilizing like the real, just the legitimacy of sex trafficking. Now, now that's QAnon. It's like, really? Yeah. There's a lot of psyops out there. Yeah. And that's kind of something that Luke and I often talk about off the show is just that there are a lot of psyops. There are a lot of things that are close to the truth and they're twisted a little bit and then people get obsessed about them. And I think maybe the similarity between both of our shows is, is that you know, we're trying to give people more information so they don't get sucked into bad information, right? Right. And I think a lot of people deconstruct or walk away from their faith because they don't understand things like the Old Testament. They don't understand what was going on. And then they get to the modern age and they get indoctrinated by the world's views. And then they go, oh, yeah, that Old Testament. You have guys like you know, Andy Stanley saying that we should break up the New Testament and the Old yeah. Testament because, because they don't understand. They don't understand the Old Testament. And I think a lot of people, they can get afraid. Like, you know, a lot of people they get freaked out the fact of like, you know, ancient writers of the Bible read everything of the time. You know, we have this very small view. Well, we can't read anything. We can't, we can't have information because information is bad. And if you watch ancient aliens, you're going to get sucked in and you're going to leave the faith. Well, your faith wasn't very strong to begin with, if that's Mm -hmm. the case. Right. And so on our show, we just try to get people better answers. Like, okay, this is why people get sucked into ancient aliens because they actually see that ancient, the ancient world is very complex and there's weird stuff going on. And even ancient aliens sometimes will use the Bible to explain how this stuff was, you know, how human beings were interacting with realms and getting knowledge from another realm. Right. And building this stuff. I mean, they, in some ways, they even have a better understanding of the Bible, I think, than modern day Christians who are so in a box. And then when something comes at them that they don't understand, they lose their faith overnight. They And then they deconstruct and then they're anti. And you're like, man, if you just... If you just weren't so, I guess, tight about being able to to see all of the things, to read different things that that maybe you're you're just you kind of knee jerk against. For sure. I don't know if I'm making sense, but it's just I think on our show we're like, let's go back, let's 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 understand the ancient world, let's under, understand the ancient mindset and how it relates to the modern day mm-hmm. paranormal stuff and how it never went away. Right. It just sort of it just sort of went underground, but. These things have been going yeah, on. Got new marketing. Time. Mm-hmm. Just got some new marketing. Just refresh yeah. that brand, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Andrew, what were you going to ask? What were you going to ask earlier? No, yeah. It just reminds me. It's kind of like, I don't know if there's a correlation or not, but it seems like uh, society and rebellion uh, doesn't have the same protection from God against things that are preternatural or supernatural. I would say a sign of heightened supernatural experience that are absence of God's uh, peace in the life of a nation would be a sign and form of judgment. Uh, I find it really interesting that people who attend from deconstructing from the Bible because they may be struggling with the fact that there was a magicians in Pharaoh's court that also turned a staff into a snake. I, yeah. remember, I remember having questions about that. I was like, Moses, that's fine. I get it. Moses can turn a staff into yeah, a snake. Yeah, God right. created yeah. the world in yeah, six yeah. It's in six days. Moses can do it. But when they did it, I was like, that's, what a, little, they doing? <laughs> that's a little strange. Yeah. But, um, but anyways, well, it's and you had mag- mag- magicians showing up to the uh, birth of Christ. Remember, the three, the yeah, the, the magi, yeah. And <laughs> so uh, what, what's that all about? You know, uh, right, right. So like, with the, over that. 
with the, with the coming of deconstruction, what I find interesting is that people go away from Christianity, which I think is the, again, the highest supernatural experience anyone can ever have. We're talking about a God who incarnated, didn't just show up and disappear and cause fear into people, but in, incarnated into man, fully God and fully man, and then lived a life, not in secret, but publicly, right. And was crucified publicly, uh, and died on the cross for the people that hated him. Right. Yeah. And that through yeah. belief in him, you can have salvation, like a, a, an amazing thing, bringing spiritually dead people to life. And it says in Christ is hidden all the treasures of hidden uh, of hidden wisdom and knowledge. Right. In him, like having the ability, Paul says in Colossians, when he's praying for the church, that they'll be filled with all spiritual wisdom and knowledge mm -hmm. uh, in Christ, which is amazing that we have that ability in Jesus and through his word. But people who deconstruct maybe because of paranormal or supernatural experiences, they think that the Bible is contradictory to the world, but they go and they, they go off the whole other end, right? Into other types of uh, paranormal and supernatural experiences yeah. saying gender is fluid, right? Yeah. That they yeah. deny the physical existence of their own body and they go to this weird uh, psyche form of gender and mutilate themselves, right? Yeah. Like it's a really weird situation at play. I, I think that what we're going through today in our society in terms of having more supernatural experiences than let's say a thousand years ago. I may, I, you guys probably have sure. way more knowledge on me on documented history <laughs> of supernatural experiences, but just hear, just hear me real quick. All right. I think it's a sign of God's judgment on a, on a nation. Like our nation literally covenanted with God upon its in con, like its conception, like with the Mayflower compact and things of that nature. And literally we have rebelled against the same God that would protect us from the things that are out to confuse us and to harm us, right? Like there is another realm uh, that we should not get access into. Why? Because does it give you the truth? No, it doesn't give you the truth. It's there to lie to you. It's there to confuse you. And it's there to pull you away from your creator. And I don't know. It's just a weird part of the world that we're living in today. Like you talked mm. about, I think, um, what, what is it? It's like $150 billion industry, the, the sex slave industry. And like, I, I remember yeah. we did an episode on it with the founders, Jerry, and we went into some of the numbers, the finders, uh, the finders yeah, episode, yeah. but it's the second highest grossing industry in the world. That's yeah. never talked about. And I mean, we, we deserve judgment, man. We deserve yeah. wrath. Uh, yeah. we deserve to be confused. We deserve to have uh, supernatural things come out of the woodwork and uh, scare us and give us fear. Why? Because it should run us into the arms of the one who incarnated and died for us. He didn't run away from us so that we can repent and turn back to Christ. Like that's, that's at least my ultimate hope <laughs> in it. I don't know where I'm going with that either. Yeah, but that's no, what you guys no, are no, making no, me think a good about. Point, though. I think we've, we've given over authority to other things. Right. Yeah. yeah and, kind of. Yeah. And, 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 and listen, the supernatural realm or the spiritual realm, whatever you, whether you talk to, you know, we've talked to Catholic priests and we've talked to a bunch of folks, but the, the reality is, is that, the Bible makes it very clear that it's it's, it's very legalistic, mm -hmm. and and you you can give permissions and and by giving over your worship and giving over authority to things and I, and I think that's kind of what you're saying and and I think it's true just in the same way that the, that the the demons have to obey the name of Jesus and that even if you look at some of the the odd scenes in in the Old Testament like Satan has to get permission from God to sift Job you know and everything is per, is permissive is permission it, it's by permission and i think you make an interesting point like perhaps and i don't say i know the answer to this I, and i think it feels like the veil is thin yeah. just in general but mm -hmm. perhaps we've given our given permission and given authorities over cuz you're right like this was a place that was that was founded on the principles of, of christianity you know they called a judeo christian nation right and, mm -hmm. and it's very much we slaughter more children here than any think about the things that are happening here and, yeah and, in some ways, those I'm not my opinion. In some ways, I think those things are permissions to for things to that go bumped potentially to to be. Yeah, it's complicated. Allowed. Yeah, it's complicated. A covenantal it's exchange. Very complicated, but it's I, a covenantal exchange. It, yeah, I mean it, it's yeah. It's well, government. even it, even in this is interesting because I was listening to the you know, even in the ten plagues, you know, God provided light for the Israelites in in Egypt during that judgment, right? So I think God always gives his people, we have to endure pain and we go through str struggles and suffering, but God always provides an out for his people, I think. And it's difficult because we do live in a nation that is controlled, very much controlled by elites. And we're all waking up to this, you know, they're running these underground, they're all part of this underground crime ring and there's a shadow government. And I think most people who listen to our show, you know, at this point, <laughs> understand that that's happening, but mm -hmm. Christians, also have the power and authority of Christ to to combat these things. And I think that we, we talk to people all the time who've been sort of supernaturally rescued in, in situations when they've been 
up against evil, horrific evil. Yeah. And you'd be surprised at some of the stuff that happens, whether like it's abductions or it's some, there's a lot of satanic ritual abuse stuff that comes through our channels because these entities are involved and blurry creatures are, are there. And yeah. if you want to know what's going on, I think Luke and I, you know, we try to expose the darkness. That's sort of our, like, don't mess around with it, but expose it, you know, mm -hmm. so that people can understand what they're up against and why they do need a savior. You know, in so many ways, it's it's just difficult. I think it's really complicated. And I think the the more our show, you know, deeper it gets, I think a lot of people just like easy answers and there aren't any. You have to know, you have to wrestle through it. I think, yeah. um, no, just, yeah. just to piggyback off of that is that, you know, you guys mentioned, you know, a guy who's been really influential was, was Heiser. It's funny because I remember yeah. it was a couple of years ago, somebody messaged us and goes, when you're first starting off and somebody said, you know, Michael Heiser, like, listen to you, to you guys. I think, yeah. he, I think Heiser referred to us as like two reform guys who are open to their spiritual gifts. And yeah, I just, yeah. I, I just got a big belly laugh out of that. And I was like, oh, that's so cool that he likes us. And he, he actually, he would like comment every yeah. now, every now and then, and I've, you know, now he's with the Lord and all that. But, you know, in the same way that you guys would look to him, like, I think uh, for us, like, the late Dr. Walter Martin is probably, like, one of the biggest influences on, on both of us. I think anybody who uh, is interested in his ministry, he has two, uh, two books that I recommend, uh, Kingdom of the Cults and Kingdom of the Occult. Uh, both uh, The Kingdom of the Occult is compiled by his, uh, his daughter, Jill Martin, and that's a compiling of his lectures on the occult. But it's, it's fascinating because, like, in the 70s, if you look back, like there's nobody else I even have any w wariness of of anybody who is actually talking about the things that Dr. Walt Martin, well, Dr. Walt Martin was talking about. He was talking about ESP, like extrasensory perception. Like how to differentiate yeah. between like real extrasensory perception and occultic extrasensory perception. Yeah. He would talk about like UFOs and aliens. Like I don't know of any yeah. Christian minister in the '70s who was actually giving an apologetics towards. Ufology or talking about Jehovah's Witnesses Chuck, Chuck, or Mormonism. Chuck Missler was. Chuck Missler okay. was. That was. Yeah. He was. There's a, yeah, there's yeah, a, yeah, he always, Jeremiah, he always, to the side, dude, we had, as a kid, I remember we had King of the Colts at my house. Nice. In, in my house. It's funny that you say <laughs> that, you bring that up. I hadn't thought about that in a while, but that book, I remember seeing this book in my, in my parents' library, yeah. like, and it was one that stick, sticks with you because I was like, what is that about? You know, right. I remember my dad saying, oh, with this, Mm -hmm. You know, when the Jehovah's Witnesses come to the door, we'll, we'll explain yeah. it to you. <laughs> right. Yeah. But then, like, yeah. he would tell stories. Like, we actually talked with our, we had an interview where we would talk with his producer. And, but he was also very weary in understanding of the reality of the supernatural and, like, the dangers of the occult. Like, he always walked around with a giant crucifix. Mm -hmm. He would always wear that, especially because he'd always say, like, hey, you can always deal with occult, like that's fine, but when you need to be very, very wary if you actually deal with like ministry towards the occult because you're opening yourself up to like all sorts of spiritual warfare. Yeah. So he would do lectures and stuff would happen with his radio equipment and recording equipment. And in fact, um, the Craig Nelson, who's a producer that we interviewed, he, is, he was actually present when Walter Martin was actually doing a deliverance on uh, somebody who was actually, wow. he exercised like a demon out of them. And so there's, I mean, he would deal with that sort of stuff and like he was yeah. sort of in the epicenter of that sort of ministry and he was very open and would talk about it where a lot of people they sort of some are somewhat like wary of that and i think like one of the challenges is that you know we we're talking about the sort of covenantal change where we are like a post we're a post-christian society in any sense that america was and we're really like a resurgence of neo-paganism is happening on an explosive level. So the type of supernatural experiences that were typically were reserved in Middle Eastern countries or in places yeah. like in India, like that's being normalized here in the West. And I think if you don't have an apologetic to truly understand the supernatural, I think you're going to pendulum swings into all sorts of overreactions and misunderstandings of how to appropriately address it. You know, like one of my yeah. favorite lectures, just real quickly, was of uh, the late Dr. Walter Martin when he was, there's a, you could actually look it up. We actually might repost on our platform at some point because Walter Martin just talking about exorcism. And in it, he actually reviews The Exorcist when it came out. Like he went to a movie theater mm -hmm. and he talks about like the good and the bad, like what the movie got right and where it was theologically mm -hmm. inaccurate. Most people would go into complete satanic panic mode, was like, oh, ban that movie, don't talk about it. Well, he was like, well, the conversation's already here and you can't escape it. So I'm mm -hmm. going to go ahead and talk about how we actually tackle this theologically and, and also 
put the supremacy of Christ at the forefront of that sort of film, right. which we all yeah. know the dark aesthetic that came with that film. Well, that's and I think that's how the Bible handles all these topics. It doesn't edit out difficult things because it's afraid. It doesn't it doesn't not talk about the pagan nations yeah. and the pagan practices because it's afraid you're going to get sucked into those. It teaches you like this is actually what happened. This is what they were participating in, and this is you know you need all of the information so that you're not. It's like the kid who never. You know, his parents withhold alcohol and everything from him, and then he goes off to college and he just gets smash face and dies in the frat house because he right. never even was never <laughs> exposed to anything. And I think a lot of Christians are like that today. What happens when the realms interact again? I mean, there's a lot of biblical evidence that says, you know, the realms were interacting, but in the golden age, the pre-flood societies, you had you had other realms interacting with human beings. And we made a really good case on our show for that. And a lot of people say it's gonna happen again. And what you're seeing is more and more this stuff coming out of the woods. And so what happens when this stuff rolls onto the scene? What happens when they say, oh yeah, there are aliens, there are UFOs. A lot of Christians are going to lose their faith overnight because mm -hmm. they never, they never, they never had, there's only a few rogue theologians like you were talking about, like Chuck Missler's of the world, right. who've been talking about this forever. But you got Bigfoot encounters that go all the way back at the turn of the century. You got, we brought on Diana, Dr. Diana Pasolka saying that there's a whole wing in the Vatican archives that talked about UFOs. And there's all this stuff that she got access like a thousand to. She, years of, yeah. of, of of stuff that they've recorded. There's a whole yeah. She got at, real she got access, access because she's an academic library. and she's Catholic and they let her in there to do her research. And she's like, "There's a whole section on UFOs," and it goes back like a thousand years. And you're like, "Yeah, yeah. that's interesting." Yeah. So this stuff, this stuff is around. It's here. It's it's just been conveniently swept under the rug. And like Tim Albarino says on our show, if if you know if you don't expand your perspective, it's going to break. And I think a lot of people are a stretched rubber band and you throw in Bigfoot, UFOs, aliens into that, it just breaks. But you should be able to have some flexibility so that, you know, you can allow these other topics and the gospel to to mm -hmm. mix together. And there is an explanation for all the weird paranormal blurry creatures out there. And I think we we try our best on our show to say that, you know, like Luke said, Christ is the king of kings. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. I would add to that is, is Nate is it, like, yeah, in Ephesians 5, right? Like to do not participate in the fruitless deeds of the darkness, but instead expose it. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that, that you, that, that we think about these things and at least, at least have exposure to it. But I don't want to get lost in this, that, that the most important thing is the gospel of Christ. Like this is the most important thing. All these things are, I, I think, provide really, really fascinating and interesting context and actually make sense of a lot yeah. of things we see in the old yeah. Testament. Like the reason people deconstruct, we talk about deconstructionism, right? Like, you get a politicized version of Christianity and you go, how can we support a God that, that sanctions genocide, the conquest of Joshua? Yeah. And there are answers to that. Like mm -hmm. if you look at, if you, if you look at Genesis six, four and you go, okay, you know, up until 400 years after Christ, the prevailing thought on, on this, since the writing of Genesis was that, that there was an angelic and, and human interaction that created the Nephilim, right? You have mm -hmm. this, this is what they believed until 400 years after Christ, which yeah, the take that for what around. it is. I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And you go, okay, so if these are, giant tribes or hybrid tribes everyone then and god's judging them and even if it's not yeah. that and, and, and it's just these people are evil and god's judging them like where people now are putting themselves in the place of god saying my jesus doesn't sponsor genocide right. my jesus is xyz affirming my well, they're, and, and yeah, they're reading so the story away with from, little context well, just well, so far even, away well even too truth. is that uh andrew i'll let you jump in here uh let you jump in here as well too but like even when you look at the whole deconstruction conversation it's it's just so interesting because honestly, I was having a conversation with my friend Melissa Doherty, and we were reviewing, uh, we were talking about the recent documentary Shiny Happy People, and we we're just kind of giving our feedback on it, which is all about that Duggars Nineteen Kids and Counting show. But um, you know, it's always interesting to see talk to people who have gone through the whole deconstruction route because I've been there. Like I yeah. think of everything that I've sort of obstacle that I've hit in my route. I'm like, man, I feel like I've given I've been given every single reason in the world, like why I should deconstruct, like almost every single story ever. Like I identify with them. Like I met Derek Webb, like on a tour when yeah. he was in Caveman's call. Like I know, like I, I yeah. went to Joshua Harris conferences where he was sort of leading the whole, I kissed Jenny goodbye movement. Like yeah. I've, it's funny. Like I was just watching some story on Instagram where this, uh, they're actually a really funny couple and they're like, they deconstructed and, but they're still kind of funny because they kind of talk about stuff I identify with. And, yeah. you know, they're talking about, for example, they do these things called a slave auction, which obviously it sounds kind of like cringe, like, Ooh, that sounds kind of weird yeah. now given all the social justice stuff, but it would just be like, Hey, I need to raise money for like a missions trip. So let me just go ahead and do like hard labor 
to raise money for it, right? And people would like auction off like how much they'll pay you for to like to work for them. And they talk about how cringe it was. And I actually laughed. I'm like, man, that is cringe. But part of it honestly makes me sad because they look at Christianity through the lens of sort of how some people have sort of created sort of this, this cringe culture in some sense that we're all kind of a byproduct of and, and many of us have disentangled from. It's like that's that's sort of not real Christianity when you actually look at the whole story of like of people of the ancient world and and what they were in power with power what they were under the power of and what Christ uh, did on the cross and now looking at even now how you give an answer for it and looking at how in 2020 how people are answering questions and it's a it's almost like a weird like it's pearl. like a PG, ver- yeah. PG version. It's we've like been a- given. Well, we've been given a PG version of, of Christianity. So when you get to a certain age, you know you're you're watching so much rated R content that you can't you can't put those two to, together. So you deconstruct your faith because no one ever gave you the rated R version. Yeah. When it, no one ever told you. There's a lot of Christians who just have this PG version of reading the Old Testament, and so there's the story of like the witch in Endor, right? Going going to Saul and conjuring up a dead Samuel, right? And they go, that's that that the whole thing was demonic. You shouldn't you shouldn't even think about this. But the weird part of the story is Samuel gives Saul a judgment and says, You're gonna die tomorrow. And he does. And why would a demon be giving prophecies to Saul? And mm-hmm. and people can't read these stories in a modern day context. They don't understand any of it. It's like they just gloss over all these things. So you get to a certain age and then you know, the propaganda machine of all of our education system comes into your mind and you yep. just you walk away from your faith. It, it never the gospel never really sunk deep into your heart because you never really understood it. Mm-hmm. You never really were given, this is the raw reality of human beings and what we were deceived out of and what we gave yeah. up in the garden and, and how sin affects us and the wars of the Old Testament and what we were fighting against and the technological rebellion that's been going on since the dawn of time mm-hmm. and how we just, we want to give the finger to God every yeah. single way we can. And despite all that, Christ comes, becomes a human being. Why? So he could have authority on earth. You know, he becomes human. So he has all power on earth and in heaven. Yeah. So there, there is a, there is more going on. He has to become human Mm -hmm. to have authority here because that's what we were given. We were given right to be here. And I think that I didn't understand a lot of these concepts till my forties. Yeah. Like I just sort of said the prayer and did the thing and, and sort of like, yeah, the old Testament's weird, but now, you know, I think the Old Testament is some of my favorite stuff because it's it's so raw. It's like like you said, we're obsessed with Marvel movies. The Old Testament is is got some wild, awesome stories, and it's sad to me that a lot of modern day Christians just can't they can't believe it, they can't understand it, and they're afraid of it. Mm. And so when they read the New Testament, it's like love your enemies. They're like, well, wait a minute, what about all this Old Testament stuff? They just read like these small little few gospels and then they they're confused. Yeah. They they don't understand. Like this is a whole story. This is like a linear story of of humanity, where we came from, where we're going, what's going on, and you can't just take a, a snapshot of one story and, and make make any sense of it. So in a weird way Bigfoot for us was like the opening to the these paranormal things that happen yeah. today. They've been going on forever and it's your best, it's sort of the most documented, most scientific, weird thing out there to help your brain get to a place where you're like, oh, everything's weird. Yeah. It's always been, this whole thing is weird. What are we doing on this, yeah. this rock floating through a universe? Like, it's all weird. Why, why have I been so asleep to the paranormal and to the spiritual and to the miracle that human life is? And I think in a weird way, we kind of scratched this itch that mm-hmm. like, the movies get it from the real world. Yeah. The movies, the movies are emulating like ancient history and mm-hmm. guys like Tolkien were just pulling from, you know, he wasn't inventing these things. He was pulling from ancient history, all these weird things that were going on in the ancient days, you know? And, and I think you start to understand it is a miracle. All of this is wild. All of this is bizarre. All of this is weird. And that's okay. That there's yeah. nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, why is it, why are we so afraid of the weird? I don't know. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Just so one last thing, and Andrew, I'll, I'll have you jump in here and give your <laughs> thoughts here. That's so good, man. As I was going to say before, is that like I've seen sort of like in the time we've had our podcast, I mean, we, we've explored a broad variety of topics, you know, including cults, including 
you know, aspects of the fringe, the new age, the occult, you know, some, yeah, a little yeah. bit of a, a tab of the blur verse. This is our first deep dive plunge into the blur. <laughs> but, welcome, uh, welcome. But yeah, welcome. like, you know, and interesting, you know, we talked on Saturday and the both of us sort of have a background sort of like growing up in the church and purity culture. And like I said, what's been one of the biggest counterpoints for me with like, even I've had times where I've really wrestled through, okay, what do I really believe? Why do I believe this? Like I'm, is, is my faith tan? What's the difference between my faith now versus everyone I knew who grew up around me who like yeah. deconstructed? I remember like when John Cooper from Skillet talked to the Dove Awards a couple of years ago, he was like very emotional how he talked about so many of his friends. He either walked away from their uh, Jesus, walked away from their wife, you know, and completely disavowed their faith. And I'm like, well, what, what's tangible and real? And I think honestly, for me, it's really in these last couple of years of ministry here, like watching people both come out of the cults and out of the new age, specifically the new age where it's like they tried everything under the sun that everyone's trying now, everything that the Russell brands, the Aubrey Marcuses of the world have like tried. They've Mm. been there, done that. Um, You know, my friend, Will Spencer, like he had like, he did like seven ayahuasca ceremonies, like back to back to back. And now like he's come to Christ and he's like, all that is like rubbish in comparison but it's mm-hmm. like it's it's been bittersweet because I see a differentiation between people who come out of the new age and Jesus is everything to them. Like yeah. he is this pearl of great price versus somebody like uh, a, a Derek Webb or the the two guys uh, Rhett and whatever their names are, the two YouTubers who uh, or just there's other people who are very notable who've just de- or Josh Harris's who've deconstructed, and it's like this bitter exchange. Like you know people who I knew and grew up with thrown it away but i've seen other people on the other side of the spectrum it's now everything to them what are your thoughts what are your thoughts andrew as we kind of i think we're as we're i think we're wrapping up here but what are your thoughts yeah yeah, yeah. i'm looking at the the two blurry creatures guys and i'm thinking like they're like the x files investigators right <laughs> like uh like looking at the spiritual psyops we were talking we were talking about psyops earlier in like black flags and things like that uh but we can almost see this interdimensional weaving right as there's entities or things trying to create spiritual psyops as well to keep us away from the power of the gospel or the gospel in general to distract us to deceive us and i think it's important to understand that as christians we actually have the ability and we've talked about this before jerry uh through jesus christ knowing who our god is how amazing he is how he is so much better than any of these things to not get caught up in them, but actually have an objective standard in which we weigh and judge these things and explain them as Christians because the secular world at large, when they look into these things, they don't have an answer, but they look to get peace from these things. But we know that the the only answer on how to get peace in your life comes through this, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Like it says in first Timothy four, it says talking about certain people, it says in order to, to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies, which is, which promote speculations rather than stewardship from God. That is by faith. It doesn't say don't look into those things. If you feel like you need to, it says don't devote yourself to those things and be wary of people who are swallowed up by those things. But I think as Christians, we are commanded, like you guys were saying earlier that we need to expose these deeds of darkness without being overcome by them. And so it's encouraging for me to hear you guys and uh, be two people that are in this blurry verse talking about things through a biblical worldview and showing that Christianity is the reason why we can actually give an account for these things in the first place and pointing people to Christ. So I'm thankful for that. Thanks. Yeah, yeah man, thanks we're, we're yeah. excited and we see the movement, you know, you have like Graham Hancock's ancient apocalypse, like blowing up on the charts. You have people hungry for answers and they're looking for, guys like Graham and, you know, to, to tell them what's the true history. Everyone knows that we've been taught a bunch of lies Yeah, and it's becoming more and more on the forefront and, and people are going to come to their own conclusions. And if it isn't, if Christians don't wake up and start giving people some real raw truths of how since day one, man, human beings have been in a, a spiritual war. And I think a big part of what we try to talk about on our show is it's also a genetic war. There's a lot more going on here and you can, and you can look into it. And once you start to see that there is also a genetic war, you can't unsee it and it's been going on. But I, I, I really think that the, the UFO religions and some of this like ancient alien stuff is really going to take off the next few years. So it's really important for Christians right now to address these things and look into them because we're seeing disclosure on a massive level. And that's, 
some of the guys who've been in the giant space, they've been talking about giants forever, are, are shifting more to the alien talk. Christians, oh, yeah. I mean, because that's going to be way more deceptive coming down the pike than anything else. So, yeah, we actually that's, have that's, a, that's where our heart is. So, no, that's awesome. We actually have an upcoming sort of like mini series we're doing. It's our first sort of like season one of a special we're doing called Alien yeah. Revelations and History of UFO Disclosures. Yeah. Quick yeah. cliff note stories my friend Colin. He's like, a, he's a Presbyterian minister outside of Nevada, but, um, he just called me. He's like, Hey, you got to call me. You got to talk to me. Like I'm a fan of cultists. You just started. And he was telling me about, Hey, like I, I grew up like I basically, he, he grew up, he was in a, he was into the new age. He was actually in the Masonic lodge for a while, but then he became, yeah. came to Christ. And, but he had studied like ufology for just for years. He knows all the people who are into it. And he was telling me about the whole history of like what Tom DeLonge had done with him, like working alongside the government, which to the Stars Academy. And he was yeah. saying, just long story short, there's a lot of things coming down the pipeline where a lot of people are going to understand things about UFOs that's going to become normalized conversation. And this is way before it was, it was like nightly news and Tucker Carlson and mm -hmm. things like that. And so he was just saying like, we have to be able to give answers for that. And so we are sort of, we've been sounding the drum, sort of the warning bell for like on our podcast multiple times yeah. saying, hey, this is coming and you're going to have to give some sort of answer you know, for it. And yeah, there's no easy answer either. No. There is but you have to a, lot of, it. a lot of Christians just say, yeah. Oh, it's demons. And I'm yeah. like, it's, it's not that easy. No, and it's because that's all they know. They know there's angels, there's humans and there's demons and there's, yeah. that's it. Right. And what we try to say on our show is there's a whole host of blurry creatures. And once you plug in all the characters to the story, your faith starts to grow because it like any movie, like any, any story, if you start at the end of the movie, you don't know what's going on. But when you get all the characters in the story and, and you watch it from the beginning to the end, you're like, oh, I get it. I get what's going on. You know, it's like you ever walk into a half half over movie and a lot of Christians do that. We start at the Gospels and we don't really understand why, why then, why, why a savior, when in time. You got to go back. You got to yeah. go to the Genesis and, and understand it. But that's what we do on our show. And, and we appreciate you guys like wanting to do a crossover. Yeah, this is tons us. of fun. I'm sure we can yeah. talk about this stuff yeah, forever. We'll have, yeah. we have to have you back, and we'll do one. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do we'll a, do a we'll calls. do a we'll do a volume two. This has been yeah, a we'll lot, a lot of fun, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It has. Sweet. Thanks so much, Thanks. dudes. Thanks yeah, so much, if you guys. Uh, so where can people just where can people find you guys at? So blurrycreatures.com is is kind of the hub for everything. You can find us on most social media platforms. Sweet. But uh, yeah, just we're on all the the uh, you know typical podcast apps. Blurry creatures. And uh, it's all over the place. Some some episodes are just Bigfoot stuff, and yeah. then sometimes we get real heavy into like satanic ritual abuse and things. So it's, right. it's very, it's really hard to hop into our show sometimes. Yeah, no, we take a lot of the heavy stuff as well too. Okay, um, that's good. Yeah, if any of your eyes is looking to find us, we're at uh, yeah. cultishshow.com. That's where our central hub. Where you look up cultish yeah. on uh, any of the podcast platforms. We actually have our note. We finally have a YouTube channel, which is funny after being around for five years. Like we should probably start one of those. Um, yeah. But if you go, we actually just create a domain. Uh, it's like cultishtv.com. It redirects to our YouTube channel. So you can subscribe there. We're starting to build a little tribe there, but that's where we're at. So this is a lot of fun. So hope yeah. you guys, uh, your yeah. audience enjoys uh, our conversation. Yeah, yours yeah. too. Thanks for giving us a chance. It's great to meet you, Jeremiah and Andrew. Thanks so much for yeah, thank you guys. together. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, guys. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. We're well, looking forward to volume two. Thank this is a lot of fun. <laughs>